Hi everyone, I'm working on my Celtic summer today and um, I've spent quite a long time trying to finish much of the actual pattern itself before I attempt to start any beading. So I thought today I would try and place a few beads and show you um, a more organised way to go about this. I like to do a lot of preparation before I start attempting things like this, mainly due to uh, things in the past where I found that, oh, I've dropped so many beads on the floor and I've lost my needle and there's all sorts of calamities that can go wrong and literally drive you crazy. So I try to sort of plan the best way to do things before I actually begin. And I think that's one tip that's, that's quite helpful and saves a lot of frustration in the long run. So in this particular pattern, um, it's called Celtic Summer by Lavender and Lace. It's the first one that I'm, I'm working on in a series of, of four, which is uh, spring, summer, autumn, winter. And um, I've actually done quite a lot of the border up here that you can see. So now I'm wanting to place a few beads because I want to get into um, the habit of beading before I finish the actual border all the way around. So what I do is I, first of all, I realise that the beads to this are really, really tiny. And I'm one of those bulls in a china shop that will just open a packet of beads and they'll just go flying all over the place. And even when I hold one in my hand, they're so small that I can barely see it. So it is a little bit tricky and I think it's going to take some getting used to. So first of all, I'm going to show you how I store the beads. They come in little packets like this. Uh, they're called Mill Hill Antique Glass Beads for needlework projects. And if you can see, they're really, really small. I don't really bead much. Um, I, I don't have a lot of experience with beads, so you probably find that they're, they're not too bad, but um, to me they look very small. And the one I'm going to place today, just to show you where how I'm going to go about it, is starting here on this row along. So the beads that it calls for on this particular row are called blue velvet, according to the pattern. Um, so I have prepared already a very fine needle with a thread. Now I don't know exactly how you go about actually doing the beads so I, what I did was I looked at the colour of the bead and decided that it's probably going to look better with a thread that's a very similar colour to the bead itself. This little box in particular, once you open the back like this, the beads just go poof, fly out everywhere. I didn't want to repeat that mistake. So I emptied all my beads into this little box here, which you can find, I think I, I got from Amazon. It's actually a, a little plastic box for this purpose, for storing beads, and it's relatively inexpensive. So basically all I could need to do is lift up that lid and pour a few beads out. Then my next step is to actually put the beads somewhere where they're not going to disappear. So I've just put a couple of them into this tray for the moment and I'll wet my finger just to pick one out so you can see the bead itself and how small it is. So let's try placing a couple of beads and see how that works out. Of course you're going to have to use a tiny needle that the bead can slip through and this is where it gets tricky. Oh that went on fairly easily. So the bead has to drop all the way down the thread. I could have probably used a smaller thread than this. Right down to the bottom and then I'll need to secure it. Now I only need one bead in this particular section. So let's go. So I've brought my needle up on the bottom right of that stitch and I'm going to go down top left and I think I'm going to do this twice just to make sure that bead is secure because you probably find that once you start framing things um, I actually don't know when when these designs are framed how they do it with all the beads and everything on the top but you want to sort of 
not have them sticking out too much so I think I've gone twice along there and because it's not such a huge distance to the next bead I'm going to try the next one and let's go up here and see how that works there we are that looks quite successful to me I don't think I have that much control over how the bead actually sits we'll just see how it goes as we go along and I'm going to do another one here so really it does seem to me that this is one of those things that's going to just going to take its time and some people have said that they prefer to do their beading at the very end and I can understand why because if you're using a hoop or such like which I have used on sometimes to place a hoop over the beads to place a frame of any kind over the beads might crack them or dislodge them or even break the fabric so I can understand why leaving beading until the end probably makes more sense however because it's such a slow process I can see it being quite laborious and I'm pretty sure that by the time I get to the end of here I want a break from doing this so it does seem like it's going to be quite a big task there are a lot of beads in this design and they are placed all around right down from the whole of the lady to the entire border so it's quite a lot of work but it, there is something really relaxing about it all the same I, I find that the preparation of this is has really helped tremendously it's every little thing seems to be quite um, easier if it's better thought out so as you can see even whilst I'm talking and doing this it's quite it's not that difficult or you don't need a huge amount of concentration I think one of the the tricky things here is trying not to be tempted to make too many jumps with the beads because if you say for instance suddenly want to bead one of these colours down here I would not jump with my thread down to here I would fasten off at the back and bring my thread through again and start again down here because I don't really want the back of my my design to look too messy so I think I've I've got along with this not too badly if any of you have done this design I'd be interested in knowing how you approach this part of it. Um, did you find that the beads were difficult to handle? Did you find it tricky to thread the beads? Did, was there any aspect of this section that you found difficult? So it would be great to know. So there we are. I've managed to get a few beads in. Oops. Although I'm having trouble because I'm not used to such a small needle coming through the fabric. And that doesn't look too bad. Um, so thanks for watching and let me know how you get on or what you think of this this particular part of the of the process. Thanks for watching.